I must have had a number 10 when I did that. So you took her four feet of this. Okay. They're out of the 10 in the back. Let's get the right book. They, they're in the room in there, John. They're not right there. It's page 14 in this. In this. Somebody's put a number 14 out there with my 12. I'm sorry about that tonight. I just get the wrong books out all the way around. Okay, I can have that back. We all mess up every now and then. That's right. That's yeah, right. He was perfect. Now let's do it again. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Let fire in the blood, fire in the blood. Would you arrive a la victory win? That wonderful fire in the blood. There is fire.
142. Turn over to page 195.
Ooh. The knee locked up. Yeah, I need to unlock. When you get there, say amen. We've enjoyed our conquering messages, haven't we? Somebody asked me tonight how many more things we had to conquer. We've conquered many. I think maybe I got two more. And then we'll move on. Exodus chapter number 3. And we'll begin our reading at verse number 1. Now notice what the Bible says here. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth thy people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Notice verse 11. Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God upon this mountain. 
And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Father, we thank you for this beautiful passage of Scripture, for your calling Moses out to bring the children of Israel out of bondage. This evening, as we attempt to bring the message, conquering our handicaps, I pray that you would be with me, that you would speak through this vessel of clay that I now yield to you, mighty words of wisdom, and that you would teach us how to overcome our handicaps. And we ask you to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Are you among the company of the handicapped? When it comes to doing God's work, most of us feel that we're handicapped. We just can't do it. We look at what we consider to be our handicaps and say, God won't be able to use me. Have you ever said that? God won't be able to use me. Consequently, like Moses, we surrender to our handicaps and we cease to be that that God intended for us to be. Many years ago, God called me into the ministry. And I made the statement, Lord, are you sure? Now, you got to understand, I've always been a shy boy. Growing up, I was very shy and could not speak. But God called me to preach. And for a good long time, I ran. And I said, God, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Now, you wouldn't know that now. But it was that way back then. I was very afraid and felt handicapped and didn't feel like God could use me. And God sent me to a little church, Barney First Baptist Church. And I wasn't there but a very short time and this church sent their pulpit committee over and visited with us. And God sent me here. 
I look back on my time here in the 80s and I think about the many mistakes that I made along life's way. It's good that we did what we did this evening in the mix up with the books because many times I made mistakes. And back in those days, I pastored a few people that just let me know about those mistakes. Jim Collins was one of those. I misread some scripture in one of my sermons, and he called it out right after it happened. And I mean, when you're reading, it's easy to mispronounce some of those words. But I misread something, and he called me out on it. And I apologized. But we all make mistakes along life's way. I don't know but one who never made a mistake. His name was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we look at what we consider to be our handy stack caps and say that God won't be able to use us, consequently, like Moses, we surrender to our handicaps. And we cease to be that, what that God intended for us to be. From the life of Moses, our Lord shares with us two important principles that we need to follow in order to conquer our handicaps. First of all, you need to refuse to believe your own personal evaluation of your handicaps. For 40 long and trying years, Moses had felt that God would never use him again. So the man who was educated in Egypt's greatest schools, the man who was heir to Pharaoh's throne, at this particular time was passing the day of tending his father-in-law's sheep on the backside of the desert wilderness, believing that he was handicapped. Why should we refuse to believe our own evaluation of our handicaps? That's a pretty good question. Well, first of all, because our handicaps are based only on partial truth. Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? With these humble sounding words, Moses told the living God that he couldn't do 
for him what he was asking for him to do. Have you ever told God you couldn't do what he was asking for you to do? When I ran from my call, that's exactly what I was doing, telling God that I couldn't do what he wanted me to do. Now Moses could tend the flock of sheep, but he could never free from oppression the nation of Israel. Thus Moses wanted to believe the half-truth of his own evaluation of his handicaps more than trust God's truthful evaluation. When you and I say that we are physically, socially, or spiritually handicapped, how do we know that we are? Is this our own evaluation, or is this God's evaluation? Did we arrive at this conclusion by comparing our abilities with the abilities that you see in others? Remember, God is not expecting you to come up to the standard that he set for others. Just to stand up and be accountable to the one thing that he has asked for you to do. Why should we refuse to believe our own evaluation of our handicaps? Because our handicaps are based on past experiences. At one time, Moses had been too quick in his desire to lead the children of Israel out of their horrible bondage in Egypt in Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. Now we find Moses slow and very reluctant. His past experiences caused him to feel handicapped and unusable. Now the experience of his past failures reached out and gripped him. Has anybody in here ever had any failures? Hands up all over the building. Moses had failed before in his attempt to free the people. And he felt that the present would be no different. And then there is the experience of past fears. Now this past Wednesday evening, we studied and learned how to conquer our fear. With a painful and vivid memory, Moses recalled his fears of 40 years before. Since they would not listen to him then, he was afraid that they wouldn't listen now. To conquer our handicaps, we must secondly follow the Lord's direction. The words Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, 
out of Egypt. These were terrifying words to Moses. How can I do it? Doesn't God know that I'm handicapped? Moses soon discovers that to conquer his handicaps, he must follow the Lord's direction. He must follow the direction based on God's knowledge. How surprised Moses must have been to see the angel of the Lord. Perhaps he thought that the Lord had forgotten and just did not care. But this was far from being true. God did know his address. And listen, God knows every one of your addresses as well. He knows right where you are. God did know the needs of his brothers in Egypt. God has knowledge of any handicaps that we all may have. The Lord knew better than Moses the full extent of his handicaps. Moses' lack of prestige. Moses' lack of authority. Moses' lack of eloquence. All of this was known by God. God's knowledge of your ability is known. A number of years ago, Brother John S. Gibbs had a little saying on his desk and it said something like this. God is not concerned with your ability or your inability. All God wants is your availability. And that is so true. God has knowledge of our availability. Our abilities are important to God, but not nearly as important as our availability. If you'll make yourself available, God will use you. Amen? Are you available to be used? by God. And then remember that God's directions are always backed by God's promises. God had to spend a great deal of time convincing Moses that his directions were backed up by his promises. Promises that would not fail nor depart from him. There was the promise of God's presence. God said, I will certainly be with you. And friends, listen. He'll certainly be with you. He'll certainly be with you 
in any and everything that he asks for you to do. And then there's the promise of God's power. God accepts full responsibility for empowering his servants. Now, I made the statement that I ran from my call a number of years and that I really struggled with speaking. You wouldn't know that now because God has always used his servant. God accepts full responsibility for empowering his servants so that they're able to carry out his directions and then there's the promise of God's victory. Moses learned something very important that we all need to learn. A man plus God equals enough. If a man will just surrender to God's will and allow God to use him, it will always equal enough. Humanly speaking, Moses had many handicaps. Like ours, some of his handicaps were real imaginary. But he was able to conquer his handicaps. And listen, we can too. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans eight thirty seven. Stand with me if you will. Lord I've delivered that that you trusted to me to bring to your people. And this evening you taught us how to overcome our handicaps. And we pray that we'll always be willing to look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, and that we'll always be able to overcome any handicap that we think that we have. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.